Now for a look at the markets in Zimbabwe, we're joined by Jubela Makhatukona, who is an asset manager at Bank ABC. Good morning, Jubela. Perhaps just give me a, an, uh, an overview, firstly, of how that Zimbabwean market has been performing. Hi, thanks, Dev. Um, I think if we have to look at 2012, um, you know, fairly very good rich pickings uh, by uh, investors. The broad market delivered about 4.5% uh, for the 12 months. And, you know, when you look at this number and you stake it against uh, what we have seen from uh, other African markets, it, it, it looks good. And, um, you know, out of the almost half a billion uh, of turnover that traded on the market, half of that was a contribution uh, by uh, uh, foreign participants. And, you know, uh, as the interest has always been, uh, blue chips continue to, to be exciting, and that's where much of that turnover was actually uh, concentrated. You talk about blue chip stocks being the leaders there, and, of course, uh, on a smaller exchange, uh, the blue chips, I suppose, can be much bluer. Uh, what are those stocks? What are the stocks that really influence that Zimbabwe exchange? I, I think if you're looking at them, you're looking at Delta, the brewery, you're looking at uh, the mobile phone company, uh, Econet, you're looking at uh, Insco, which has got a diversified franchise business, and you're looking at, uh, you know, quite a few others. But, but I think what, what is important, which we have to note, is that uh, the contribution of these large cap counters now is now about 75% of the overall ZSE basket. And when you compare that against the long-term average of about 60%, you can see that the weight of the blue chips is certainly uh, is significantly increased. Right. In South Africa, we often talk about how the weightings on the stock exchange, people say, why is the, the JSE going so strongly when our economy is not looking so good in other respects? And of course, the answer is a lot of the companies that drive the index and drive the exchange are big companies which have uh, uh, substantial foreign exposure. So it's not really South African companies. To what extent is your exchange re reflecting value in the economy and, and growth prospects in the economy? I, I think you have a fairly uh, a good representation of uh, the uh, contributors of GDP on the uh, stock market here. Uh, I, think, I think except for the big mining companies that are not listed, but I think the, the majority of the industrial companies are actually listed, which are the big contributors to the GDP. And then when you look at the number of 4.5% uh, and you compare that to the 4.4%, which is the estimated GDP growth figure for 2012, you can see that the market, uh, uh, you know, we, 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 it's expected that the market should be, uh, as a lead indicator, sh sh should be several times the growth of GDP. But, you know, 4.5 is certainly very close to 4.4. So in our view, it tells us one of two things. That, uh, one, uh, the market is still, itself is still undervalued relative to uh, the national output. Mm. And two, in relative terms, you know, coming back to the fact that I said about uh, the, the large caps, uh, what, what it tells us that is, is that uh, there is still a significant amount of wealth that is still trapped in the mid and small capitalized counters. Let's uh, talk about that Delta share that you talked about. Uh, now that's a brewing, a brewing share and uh, they just put out a profit update, something like 30%. Now that sounds a lot for a big company that is already one of the big companies on uh, the exchange. I, I think, the, you know, before we even talk about that number, the, the most important thing about uh, that trading update is that it is a first for this market. And Delta is obviously leading, you know, by uh, moving in line with international best practice of giving these uh, regular quarterly updates. And I think it is really in inspires confidence, especially from our foreign investor folks. Sorry, Jubela, before you go on, do you mean it's a, it's a first in the sense that no one has ever given a profit update or a profit warning or a trading update before? They just normally issue their results. Is that what you're saying? It, it is not a usual phenomenon in this market. It is mm. not a usual phenomenon, which is why it is so commendable. Yeah. Okay. And in terms of why it uh, did so well, uh, I mean, what's happening in that market? And uh, it's, it's not as if consumers suddenly have a lot more money. So what have they done to, to, to get that increased profit? I, I think what we've seen is that, uh, in summary, the update indicated that uh, for the nine months of December, you know, lager volumes are up 7%, uh, sparkling uh, beverages were up 10%, uh, and sorghum was down 9%. Uh, I think something indicating that uh, the, the preference of consumers is certainly shifting. Uh, and also, in the same period, the same nine months period, top line uh, is, uh, you know, uh, expected to be up 16%. And I think what is important to us is that when you look at the key matrices from uh, Delta, you look at PEs, you look at uh, you know, enterprise value per hectolitre, you look at price to sales, you know, all the key matrices, they are really indicating that uh, Delta still has a very rich upside still to be realised. And you know, when you look at what happened since generalization in 2009, I think they've since doubled capacity, more than doubled capacity in fact, and you are dealing with a company here that has got very strong cash flow generative capacity. It's almost operating in a monopolistic environment. 
and and you know I, th I think for the upcoming results in March, you know shareholders are certainly looking forward to uh, a very healthy dividend to be to be declared.